In this video you will learn how you can create such a soft looking skin with watercolors. You will learn how to mix your own skin tones, choose the right paper and which techniques you need to work on delicate gradients like these. Using watercolor to color skin is one of the harder subjects, especially if the skin should look realistic and clean. Since with watercolor you can only go from light to dark with, mistakes are really hard to undo. So the key is when to use the wet and wet technique. But before that, let's have a look at how to mix our skin tones. Mixing skin tones from scratch requires four different components. Red, ochre, brown and white. Instead of ochre, you can also go with yellow. But the key is to get the right mixing ratio. Since there is no single skin tone, it is up to you. If the color seems too reddish, add more yellow and vice versa. Use brown to darken it and white to lighten it. The benefit of mixing your own tones is that you are free to change even the tiniest nuances, which makes it useful for any character you want to color. The disadvantage on the other hand is that it's really hard to get the same tone every time, so you might also want to work with the fixed tone for skin. My favorite tone for this is Naples Yellow Reddish. When you are using a fixed tone like this, it's a lot easier to focus on combining your tone with other colors for various types of shading. You don't have to mix your base tone again every time you want to try out a new variation. It will also be a lot more consistent when you can always rely on the same base tone. An important aspect when mixing skin tones and the matching shadows is not to limit yourself to only two or three different flesh tones. Depending on light situations, you can add all colors to your basic skin tone to match with the overall scenery. A sunset would obviously require a different palette than a rainy day. Giving our skin more variations than just brown tones is important to give our image atmosphere. So I made a color wheel to give us a little overview. On the left I put the spectrum of flesh tones without any other added color but brown. I chose a base tone, in my case Naples Yellow Reddish, to use as an example for the rest of the diagram. Of course you can use any other color for this. On the very right I used just the color itself and dulled with black. In the middle I mixed all the other colors in to get an overview of my possibilities. Personally, I really like the purple shadow, because it goes with a lot of different sceneries, adding more vividness to the skin. To pick the right colors for your drawing, just experiment. For example, by practicing with using movies or photos as reference. A tip for darker tones. Use an acrylic foundation. The color won't lift off of the paper the way watercolor does, and that makes it more comfortable to paint shadows and highlights on top. You don't have to worry about the white of the paper shimmering through while shading. Last but not least, the choice of paper will have an impact on your painting. I recommend strong paper because for the technique that I am going to show you, we are going to push the colors around a lot. The texture of your paper will also have an effect on the appearance of your painting. There's rough paper and there's paper with almost no visible texture. Let me tell you right away. Both kinds of paper work, as long as they are strong enough. But they do have different benefits. Rough textured paper will make your picture look more grainy and your painting clearly identifiable as a work of watercolor. But it's also easier to hide tiny flaws, since they can merge with the texture. Compared to that, on fine paper every stain or edge stays visible, like on a plate, and it's very unforgiving. Nevertheless, choosing paper that has no texture enables a more softly rendered and three-dimensional look. It conceals the typical watercolor look completely and makes it appear almost like digital art. Before I start painting, I look at my sketch or line art and divide it into tiny pieces in my head that will need individual attention. Skin, lips, eyes, neck, hair, background, etc. Then I plan the order that I am going to work in. Keep in mind, with watercolor you can only work light to dark with. So start with the light areas. Occasionally the face is covered by darker hair. When that's the case, you can paint over the lines with skin color without any regret, because it will be covered by the darker color of the hair afterwards. 
So the order of this piece will be skin of the face, then lips, white of the eye, eyes, eyebrows, neck, hair, background, beanie and clothes and then the hand. It won't be that strict and I most probably will jump around between the steps when I am not satisfied with details. But this is the rough plan basically. With this painting I work with the digital reference that I made previously. You can use the color wheel to help you choose the right color. In my case I can find the base tone around the orange red spectrum. The darker ones seem more in the reddish brown area. First I read the area of the face. Normally I use plain water for it, but if the painting is darker you can already add a tint. The neck will follow up later, I only care about the face at this point. I am going to wet it with the brush thoroughly. We need to wet the surface because the soft color gradients can only be achieved when the area is wet. Then I start placing a mixture of Naples Yellow Reddish and Saturn Red to determine the basic light situation. This mixture is going to be my base color because it covers most of the face. Carefully put the base color down. As long as the paper is wet, we can push the colors in the right direction. Don't paint where the highlights are supposed to go. Once covered, they would be hard to lighten up again. Because the highlights are in plain white as well, I applied a light wash of Rutil Yellow to mute them down a bit, giving the skin a warmer appearance. Once everything really dried down, the grainy texture has disappeared. The colors are now set and should be fixed with the paper. We can now carefully add another layer of water without lifting any color off of the paper. So we wet the whole surface again. We will repeat the process of letting the paper dry and wetting it all over again every time we add another layer. When the surface is carefully wetted, I apply another layer of my mixed base tone. It's about deepening and refining the shadows we previously did. Again, I avoid using the base tone on the highlights so they stay light. The damp paper will help carrying the color so we can softly blend it with the first layer. Then let it dry. Time for the next layer. I carefully wet the paper with clear water again. This time I add the brown shadow tones with a mixture of burnt sienna, mask brown and Naples yellow reddish. These are not placed on the whole face, but on the areas where there is the least light. First I carefully draw a line with the shadow tone and then blend them with the rest. A tissue helps to regulate the colors that are left in the brush. This way you can work with the color on the paper without adding any new color to it. This is the key to smudging the already placed color and to create soft shadows. Here is a tip. If you paint it over the lines where there is no possible dark color to cover the mistake, you can take some water and your brush and try to lift them off by carefully rubbing it off with your clean brush. Once again let the colors dry completely and then wet it again. This time we are going to deepen the shadow with the next layer and also we add a more saturated tone compared to our base color. This will be our transition tone that defines and blends the places where the shadows and the base tone meet. This makes the painting more vivid and interesting because now the skin tone looks like it consists of more than just a highlight, a base and a shadow tone. I add more depth by adding more layers of colors the way we did before. I defined the nose and the nostrils by using even darker colors on the wet paper and lifting it off with a clean brush at those places where I want harder shadows.
I have ignored the lips so far because I don't want them softly blended into the skin just like the shadows. So this time, after everything dried, I won't wet the face all over again, but carefully paint the basic shape of the lips. I use Potter's Pink, Mars Brown and Burnt Sienna. At this point we don't want to paint over the line. It would ruin the soft skin, since we couldn't lift off spilled color without lifting off the color of the skin. So be very careful with this part. When the lips are wet, I fill them with shadows. I let the lips dry down completely and then wet the whole face again. At this point, I try to blend parts of the lips with the skin, so they won't look like sticked on. Also, I use the occasion to add more shadows to the lips. Time for the eyes. I wet the area of the eyes with the light grey to give the white of the eye some shadows, making them appear like a sphere. When it dried down, we can start with the rest of the eyes. Just as with the lips, I am very careful because I don't want to paint over the lines when drawing the lash line or eyebrows. I used Thalo Sapphire Blue and Indigo for the eyes. Because the face is done so far, I start working on the neck. It's just my personal preference, so you can do it differently. But I feel the neck and the face fit together better when they are done directly one after the other. Nothing much to say on how the neck is painted. It works just like how I did the face. Wetting the area, placing colors, letting it dry and repeat. Back to the eyes. At certain points I feel the need to use a pencil for single lashes, when brushes give me a hard time to draw delicate lines. So I really recommend switching media when it's for the benefit of the picture. If the pencil stands out, we can also wet it and add color again. This way we can merge everything together or even add more depth. Last but not least, we add highlights on eyes and lips with a covering white.
This is what the picture looks like when everything else is done. As you can see, the places where we painted over the lines is now covered by details like the hair or the t-shirt. Um, there will also be a full video on this picture soon on this channel, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Also, tell me in the comments what I should cover next. If you're interested in more videos that feature a softly rendered skin, make sure to click on this playlist. And if you are more looking for tutorials, just click here.